Yo, what's up guys? You've got Lightning here. We've got another game play coming to you guys today. This is part of my Road to Diamond series. Now, the game, I recorded the game, but I didn't record my voice because I've been sick, so my voice, I just couldn't talk properly. So, I'm actually doing the voiceover for this after the game's been played, uh, just so you know. Uh, so, we're versing Trindamir. Um, this is like plat 4, mid plat elo, I suppose. Um, first of all, guys, shout out to Hi, I'm Collie, and my name's Jeff. Uh, for this game, you guys have a, we had a pretty good yarn. Um, you guys play pretty well, so uh, I just wanted to go over this game because I didn't really carry or anything. I just, I just did my job, so I just wanted to do a bit of a commentary on this video, especially versing Trindamir. He's quite, uh, if you let him loose, uh, he, he could be quite devastating to your team, you know, if he gets ahead of you, you can't stop his split push, so this game, uh, I just showed a good example of keeping him on a leash, um, not letting him get, get run away with the game. Uh, he did this level 1 uh, spin, he didn't get, get up to level 2, which is um, probably his fault. Normally what they do, they like to spin through the last uh, 3 minions uh, and try and get level 2, and then and then all a new level 2. Like this, but um, we're a rallier and we can just stun him, auto attack, walk away. He takes minion aggro from four of my minions, so that's fine. Just use a potion. I like to keep um, in, in pretty good health uh, early in the matchup because if he gets those crits on you, they can be devastating early. So he luckily didn't get any crits on me. He got one crit on me. Probably shouldn't have traded so heavily. He's got four minions attacking me, so that was probably my fault. I shouldn't have done that last queue. I should have just backed off after the E and couple of autos. But we've got Kha'Zix coming up here. Uh, we're trying to hit level 3. He's probably going to hit level, level 3 first. If I get the stun off on him. I'm just trying to keep him here. Um, and so Kha'Zix comes. I try and commit with him. He's got his ghost going, but Kha'Zix has the red buff, which slows him down a little bit. So I go for the flash and the slow from my E, because uh, the chance of killing him was, was highly likely, especially because we both had flash and he had, only had ghost. So that that's his ghost down. I mean, ghost for two flashes is probably worth, but we still got the kill, which puts him behind quite a bit. Especially because look at his wave, he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 minions. Well, a bit less than that now. You know, pushing into my wave. So, what I'm trying to do here is leave the wave sitting here without crashing into the tower. And then I want to back. Because I want to deny him the whole wave. And that, if he loses a whole wave of XP, then I can teleport straight back to lane. Uh, you know, it puts me at such an advantage. So we'll see, we'll see what how the lane plays out here. So at the moment it's pushing to him, to me, sorry. And what do we go for here? Yeah, early armor and a bit of health. So that's more of a defensive lane. Uh, if I wanted to be more aggressive, I, I would have gone for straight up for, for daggers and a longsword or something like that. Or even a Doran's Blade and a cloth armor. That would have been good too, if I was able to get that. I would have had to wait a little bit for it though. So we're just trying to keep the wave here. This way I don't have to use my 3 minute ward. At 3 minutes you normally ward uh, for the jungler, but I don't have to this way because I can just sit here with the wave sitting right in front of my tower and Trindomir has to come up for the CS and knowing he's got no ghost um, and he probably doesn't have a point in his W yet so I can just trade, I got the level up, I can just trade with him, chunking him uh, probably shouldn't have committed too hard because I dragged the wave all the way back to the middle uh, I took minion aggro from all of his minions and dragged my wave all the way back to the middle of the lane which probably isn't really ideal but um, uh, it's going to push anyway right so I mean might as well just like push it in um, and then place some wards. But ideally you want to, I want to keep the wave, my idea is to keep the wave sort of on my side, so when I want to fight him, I can fight him, and I don't have to worry about their jungler being there. But if the wave's, like, right up here like this, see, we're trying to bait him into auto-attacking me, so he takes Minion Negro, but he hasn't done it yet. And he still hasn't done it. Oh well. It still, it still keeps him, uh, gives him a chance to miss the CS, but it's pretty, it's playing pretty aggressive, like, the, I should have placed the wards, and backed off and placed the wards, because the worst thing that can happen now is that I get ganked and die, I don't have a teleport, and he can, the wave probably won't freeze, it's, it's already pushing, especially because it's so close on his side, and there, he doesn't really have uh, a minion, and, like, my minions don't have the numbers advantage, so it's going to push anyway, so I could just sit back here and, and let it push straight to me. But the idea of this whole lane uh, at this stage of the game, because he's got that door and shield, right? So I can't really, if I all, I have to like all in him and burst him. I can't really do sh like short trades because he'll just regen it back up. So as long as I keep my farm up and just stay ahead of him, 
It should be fine. Another good trade. Just just chunking him, making him waste his fury, giving him no uh giving him no way to to to, to get into me and fight me. Because if he all ins me with his fury and I've got I say I waste my E or something like that, you know, that's 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 I'm probably gonna lose the trade. And I, I don't wanna give him any breathing space at all. Just wanna keep him on his leash, keep him here. And don't let him uh, run away with the game. If I if I roam, he could probably take a tower. But if I can delay his power spike, see, I'm not letting him back here. Uh, at the at this moment, I believe the lane will push to me if I leave it here, because we have two minions advantage, and his his minions are gonna get to my minions first and start attacking them. So I back right here. He TPs. I back anyway because he's gonna shove it into my tower, but. He can shove kind of fast, but but he's not going to shove it into my tower before I, before I get there. See, so he's not, he's pushing it, but it's not going to arrive there too early. Like I might miss one or two minions, but but it's better than losing like a whole wave, right? So I backed there, got my longsword, got my dagger. So we're a bit we're a bit messy in our build at the moment, but you know having that extra health, having the armor, having the AD and the dagger. Um, the attack speed, you know, it all it all helps against his matchup because you don't want to get cheesed by like his his early crits. And here I just burst him down. I'm trying to bait out his ult. I didn't get it. That's alright. Yeah, I can still heal up. I did. I did. It probably wasn't the best option to trade that, but um, at the time it seemed like a good idea. I just felt like I was so far ahead that I wanted to try and bait out his ult. Get him low so he can't commit to me. Cause I know if he if I if I go on him again, I'll win the trade. He'll have to he'll have to use his ult unless he just spins away and wastes his fury, if he does get any fury. So I'm just sitting here, let, letting the, the wave do its thing and just last sitting. That's all I'm gonna do, and just try and zone him off the CS. If I can zone him off the XP range, I will, but um like I think I'm trying to like make him walk backwards from the from this minion here, but he does walk back. I d I'm not sure if he missed XP on that minion, but that's what I'm trying to do, just get any advantage that I can, whether it's just denying him one CS or um, making him, denying him XP on any minion that I can. So yeah, I'm just walking ahead, making sure I get that CS, and, and just making sure he can't get any fury, can't get any advantage in lane, so he can't ramp up his fury and have that all in potential. He's running TP and Ghost, obviously, so he doesn't have Ignite, so that, immediately when I saw that, I knew that he would never be able to 1v1 me. Until until maybe later when he gets heaps of crit, maybe um, some sort of health item as well. But he does outscale you. You have to remember that. But early levels you can you can quite easily shit on him as long as you don't fall for his um, level two cheese. I think the worst thing you can do as a rally is, is start your Q versus Trinomir, and then um, letting him level two all on you. Especially when he has ignite, he just his chances of killing you are so so high. So you gotta play the first couple levels pretty carefully. Now Kha'Zix is pinging me to go steal this guy's blue, so we go and do that. Looks like Soraka used her ult. Cast TP's down here, so I decide not to TP, I decide to take this blue. Uh, cause Cass, Cass is level 8, you know, these guys are level 6, so they're not gonna kill him, especially with Soraka there. But, I think having the Irelia TP and the Cassidy TP is really, is really good, cause if I make a, I should, like, Cassidy can make a play bot, and then I've still got my TP to make another play bot when maybe if, if Trinomir tries to counter Cassidy's play then the next time um, there's a play bot I can TP you know. So here, yeah bait out his ghost and his ult. I flashed, I, I flashed because I knew Kha'Zix was coming but I mean I guess it was risky but we got the kill shutting him down just even more. So what I did there as you guys might have seen uh, I, I ulted through the minions so I could close the gap without um, Wasting my my Q, I got the Q reset off the off the minion. So flash Eing him and then slowing him. That was like I guess it was kind of risky, but um, he had nothing else, and then Kazakh was there. Even though we blew our flashes again, see we're keeping Trindamir at bay. He can't really do anything, and I'm just letting. If you look at the score, like I'm just letting Kazakh snowball off the off everyone really. Like he's got two kills, two kills top. I haven't got any kills, but that's fine. I don't I don't need to kill this Trindamir over and over again. All I have to do is, is stop him from running away. Uh, with the game, with with this lane, you know. So if, as long as we keep him here, suppress him as much as we can. Um, I know my Kazakhs can carry, and my Kassin's also, you know, he's going pretty ham as well. But the last thing I want is to start roaming and not get anything, and then Trindamir gets my tower, you know, gets a static shift or whatever, starts wave clearing like a beast, and then 
and then just runs away with the tower, all our towers. But I find a good TP here and I go for it. Go on Varus here. He got silenced so he couldn't take the threshold. That was a really good silence from Soraka. It really just saved us there. Gave me the kill for free, so that was good. And now I'm just going straight back to top. I think I'm back here. Do I back here? Yeah. Because, I mean, the, the time it takes to back and then go to top lane is basically the same time it takes to run all the way from bot lane to top lane. And I see Soraka's pinging the Scuttle Crab to take it away from Kindred. They do a really good job at um, taking all those camps away from Kindred. This game, like, Kha'Zix uh, was right in his jungle, you know, taking taking all the camps that were marked, so that was really good. And Soraka's also got that on her priority list, so that was also good. So Trinity is trying to push here, but luckily I, you know, I'm coming back to top lane in time, and we made a play bot, so I got a kill for free. And Trinity is trying to push down this tower, but he did, like, no damage to it. I guess with that, um, his early game, he wasn't able to uh, get any early, um, you know, attack speed damage items quickly, so... He's a bit behind in items now, so he's not going to do as much damage. Which is really good. It just, it just means we're still keeping him on his leash. There we go, denying his fury, making sure he backs off. So he can't keep stacking his fury. And I don't know whether the jungler is or anything like that, so... We're just... We're just going to keep keep the wave here. There's no point in overextending or anything. I'm pretty sure he backed after this, but... We might have done the jungle camp, I'm not too sure. But I'll try, at this point I think I want to try and keep the lane pushed in. That's what I was trying to do, just keep the lane um, pushing. Because after I've, now I've got my Phage and my Sheen, like, there's no way he can fight me. Even if he um, was close to his like, Static Shiv, I think he got Vamp Scepter. Um, he might go for a Bork, I'm not sure. Waste of my Q there, unfortunately. So now that we're pushed up, I see Kindred's bot. But I do ward. Do I ward? I ping in the Kindred, so I save my ward. But I'm about to have it up. Mid's missing. Mid's bot. Trinity has a lot of health than me. So I can't really fight him. And his minions are coming up, so... We just keep him top. Making sure he can't split push or anything like that. Keep him in this lane. Give him no give him no options. Make him, make him think that he has to stay in this lane. Because my, my team's running away with the game. All I, all I have to do is... Um, just, just stop... Trindomir from from giving don't give Trindomir the option to split push our top lane and, and and destroy our towers, you know. So as you can see he's got a zeal and a vamp scepter, so he doesn't really have any items yet, but once he goes for that shiv, he'll start to do a lot of damage to towers and wave clear pretty fast. As you can see, I'm going for a mean trade on him, but um he so he wastes all his fury. I get the good trade on him using the corrupting potion and my W combo. Go for another all in get his ult. That's all I wanted to do. If I can bait at his ult. See, right now, I've got no ult, right? But he's got no ult either. And the odds of him killing me without his ult is really low at the moment. He doesn't have any crit damage, and um, he just can't deal enough damage quick enough to, to deal with me. See, we bait, we get his teleport as well. So we got his ult and his teleport for free, really. So he's got to teleport back to lane instead of making a play bot or anything like that. He can't, he can't do anything on the map. And then, yeah, get the Ninja Tabai. Ninja Tabai is so good against Trinomir. It takes away so much of his damage. Um, I think they've, as of 7.11, they are 10% of the auto attack damage that they reduce. And they also give you 30 armor, you know. So that's such a good item versus basic auto attack champions like Trinomir, whose only way to deal damage is auto attacks, you know. So I think they're, they're, a, they're a must buy in, in this lane. Normally, if you're struggling, you can buy them earlier, but in this this, this instance, I didn't really feel the need to. Oh, I was already ahead through the Kha'Zix ganks. See, now my team's just running away from the game. They're all roaming. Um, Sivir's left bot just to sort of wave clear, and Soraka's roaming with the, the, the Kassadin and the Kha'Zix. I try and shove top lane as fast as I can. I didn't see the Kindred by the Soraka. I thought they were pinging me to, to push the lane. But then I see that Kindred ulted, ulted and then they're going to kill him anyway, so I didn't uh, commit to that at all. I just wanted to go for the top tower, really. I can see that diving Sivir here. Unfortunately, they do get her, but um, but we're still going to get this tower, you know, so it's, it's kind of worth. We've already got the first tower, our bot and mid tower, so... Yeah. See, I, I guess I should have uh, tp down there. But I, I just wanted to get the tower. Maybe TPing was the best option. 
But, um, I don't know. I got the tower anyway. It's unfortunate that Sivir died. Maybe I shouldn't have left her to die. So here I TP down. I can see cars are coming from that side. So I come from this side. And then try to get an assist, but I missed. So that's unfortunate. But now I just take this away from Kindred. Is it even marked? I can't see if it's marked on my mini map. Oh, we take it anyway. Oh, yeah, it is marked. Okay, so we take it away from Kindred. Straight back to top. Don't let Trinomir get anything. So if a Trinomir is split pushing and he can't get any towers, he's basically a useless Trinomir. But ultimately, I think I think if Trinomir takes it night, that's the best idea. Uh, especially for Trinomir. I just, I just think he needs to win lane to sort of run away with the game. Or not get destroyed. So luckily my team, especially with Kha'Zix getting the early two kills from ganking my lane, even though I didn't get the kills, it, it doesn't matter. Um, even though I wasn't getting the kills, at least Kha'Zix got them and Kha'Zix was able to sort of run away with this game pretty quickly. Now it's 8-20, to 20, so we're so far ahead. And all, all, all it is now is just a matter of, of not going crazy, not doing anything stupid, like, uh, you know, trying to dive people for no reason and things like that. Just got to play it smart and just keep pushing, keeping the lane pushed. And just making sure we try and roam with the team when we can. See, Trinomir's got a shift now. He's still trying to just clear waves and, and push. Yeah, I just cancelled my back for him. But that's alright. I don't have my TP, but... I can just keep clearing waves. I can get my Triforce anytime I want. Oh, I forgot that I switched to buy. I bought Triforce instead of Ninja Tabo. So I think next back I'll be definitely getting into the Ninja Tabo. I think at the time I was thinking that I'm so far ahead of Trinomir at the moment. I might as well get my Triforce. It's my big power spike. Just using my ult to clear the wave. I see everyone's bot, so I use my ult to clear the wave because um, it's not very likely that I'll need it very soon. So we do that and try and get some good pressure on this uh, tier 2 top tower. I don't know if we get it right now. Everyone's missing, so I should probably get out of here pretty soon. But I know they were just bot and four of them are dead, so... The only other person up is there, but Lena. Oh, they're all spawning now. So we get a free tower. And because of my team's advantage, I'm able to just do this for free. Since Trindamir had to help, or he felt like he had to help us, you know, answer the, the bot lane. Um... I can just sit top and let my team just do what they're doing and just keep getting the, these these global gold advantages for the whole team. But now, you know, with 2.8k, I should be backing, but I think I go for another wave. Because my team's pressuring mid, so if, if we've got no pressure top, their whole team can just go mid and fuck my team up. So I decided to push this in, so at least someone has to answer it. So even if it's Trinomir, it doesn't matter. At least someone answers it. So it just means they can't jump on my team if they're pushed up a little bit. I was doing a test here to see if Trinomir would go on me, but he didn't, so <laughs> that was quite funny. I had a feeling it wouldn't go on me. I think I sell my Corrupting Potion here, do I? Yeah, so I can get Sterox. Sterox is so good on Aurelia right now because the um, when your Sterox pops and you get your shield, uh, you get increased... Uh, base AD damage for, another, for 8 seconds instead of, I think it was like 3, and then also... The shield is based off your max health instead of a percentage of your uh, bonus health or something. So it's it's way better than what it used to be. You're going to do so much more damage. Or well, not shit tons more damage, but you're going to do a, you know, a considerable considerable amount more damage um, with this new Sterox gauge rather than the, the last one before it was changed. So it's a pretty good second buy, especially because we have the armor item um, with the boots. Then we can jump into some health. And your kindred dies there. Kindred really flopped the game. Um, for his team, to be honest. Well, for himself, really. He did some really silly ganks and, and bad decisions, I suppose. And he wasn't able to keep track of Kha'Zix or anything, so Kha'Zix just ran away with the game. After getting two kills top, I think he got a kill mid or something as well. You know, he was just able to run away with the game. So I didn't really have to do much this game. I only had one job, and that was just to, to keep Trinomir where he is. And see, so look now, I'm so far ahead of him. Just, just... 100 to 0 really fast. Well, we didn't kill him, but he had his uh, Q up. So now me and Cassie just go for this tower. So at this point, the game's the game's pretty over. But um, 
I just wanted I just wanted to show this game just to show that um, it's not all about trying to get kills and, and, and win your lane. I mean, we won lane, but we didn't have to get all these kills to get it. To, to, to win lane, we didn't have to, uh, you know, get all these kills. Uh, Kazakh's got both the, the, the gank kills, which is fine. And then all I had to do is, um, you know, just keep Trindamir at bay, keep him on a leash, don't let him, don't roam too hard without my TP that I can't answer his split push. So every time I was able to answer that, and my team was just able to do what they want without worrying about a Trindamir, um, you know, taking two towers in a team fight. you know what I mean? Because the most annoying thing, uh, you know, when a Trindamir just, just split pushes and you're all, you're all bot lane or something like that, and then he just takes two of your towers. And then you've got to make a decision, do you fight 5v4 and try and try and kill them? Or do you back and try and answer the split push? We're so strong. So I get the Trinomir. Since I've got those ninja tabbies, I can tank the tower quite well, you know. And then Sterax gives me a good shield after that. So yeah, the game's over, but you can see a snow snowball of effect, you know, just how thing the game played out with the Kazakhs and also the you know the Kassner doing work as well, and me just doing my job top. I mean, I haven't died or anything like that, so uh, it's just it's just keeping that Trinomir at bay, not letting him, uh, you know, run away with the game at all. Uh, deny him any gold that you can with the with the minions, and then and then with the global gold from the towers, um, you know, he didn't get my towers, so I mean, they didn't take any of our towers, but. I knew that with uh, my team getting fed, you know, I wouldn't have to do much this game. I just had to do do my job in top lane. I didn't. I wasn't the person this game that had to carry. You know, like Kaz got all the kills early, so he had to carry. Well, it was sort of on him to carry. I mean, he did a good job. So shout out to him, man. Shout out to you. You had a good game. And so yeah, that was that gameplay, guys. Um, I just wanted to show you that game just because. Well, you know, just to show that, you know, you don't have to do all this stuff to to carry like get all these kills and roam well you, if you win lane and you can snowball roaming's always good because the person that's the person if you get fed in a game it's always good to roam and, and get your team ahead but i wasn't that person in this game as you can see from the stats you know that that was kazix and cassid in this game all i had to do was uh you know worry about my lane and worry about the um worry about the trinomy you know trying to get a split push going but as you can see from his items he got the shiv and he was going into a bork, so and he had Berserker grief, so he could have he could have taken sub towers, but he just he just didn't have any opportunity to because he was just kept on his leash the whole time. So yeah, that was that was a good game, I guess. Um, just an example of how games can go differently. You know, you don't always have to be the person to carry. Uh, and yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Uh, I'll be making another video probably in a couple of days once I've, I'm not as sick, but um. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you uh, sort of learned something about this game. And uh, I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. Catch you later. Yeah.